Welcome back to another $400 E39 episode. In today's show, we're going to be addressing the check engine light, which is currently on in the car, and unfortunately, it's going to involve removing the intake manifold. And I'll be removing the intake in order to replace the knock sensors um, that are located attached to the engine block right under the intake. Now when I first got this car, I knew I had to remove the intake in order to replace hard plastic coolant lines that are also located under the intake manifold. And I removed the intake and did that job a few weeks ago. So it looks like I will be removing it yet again and uh, take you through the process of replacing these knock sensors. Here are the knock sensors we will be replacing. And these are actually uh, small microphones in a way. These are piezoelectric sensors um, that pick up very slight um, vibration, variances in vibration, and that's due to pinging and knock control in the block or the engine of the car. So what happens is if you put cheap gas or maybe you got a batch of bad gas, you can actually have um, knocking or pinging and these sensors will pick that up, send a signal to the ECU, and as a result change the ignition timing to prevent any damage to the engine. Now some of the symptoms I've noticed, um, while I have the P0330 code, uh, it's telling me that the bank 2 sensor has a weak or no signal. Um, basically I'm noticing that the car has a weak or kind of sluggish performance and of course the service engine soon light is illuminated on the gauge cluster. So let's get out there and remove that intake manifold. First let's disconnect the negative terminal from the battery. While I'm in here, I'm going to replace the dipstick tube o-ring. Okay, so the intake is propped up out of the way, and I've disconnected the harness right there, you can see. And then our first knock sensor is right here by the hard coolant lines. It looks like a maybe a 13 millimeter holding that guy on. And then that sort of goes together, and we have another one hiding back there. There's the other knock sensor right there. So we'll use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the bolt, securing it to the block. And the other one is way here in the back. And there we go. Those are the factory knock sensors with 248,000 miles.
and we'll install the new ones in the same fashion as we removed the old ones. And let's plug the harness back in. All right, well, that's pretty much all there is to it. All we have to do is reinstall our intake and the accessories, and we're good to go. All right, guys, so the car is running beautifully after replacing those knock sensors. They were definitely the problem. Um, I took the car on a road test, and as soon as I started driving it um, for about 20 or 30 minutes, I noticed immediately that the miles per gallon started climbing um, on the computer. Right now it's at 24.7 miles per gallon, and I actually had it up to about 27. Uh, it was like 26.7 miles per gallon um, on the highway. And the only reason I couldn't get it higher was because of traffic and uh, I you know, decided to get off the highway. So now that I've driven the car for about 90 miles, uh, 94 miles, I'm going to take it through emissions and see if we can get it to pass. Uh, basically, um, all of the monitor systems have to be ready in order to pass emissions, and that usually takes time to reset. It takes anywhere from 70 to 100 miles of driving. And as you can see on the dashboard here, I've done about 94 miles, and now I'm going to take it through the emissions, and um, fingers crossed that we pass. Okay, so I have great news to report. The car has passed emissions. Um, I got this old 525i through emissions today, and basically after replacing those knock sensors, which were faulty, um, that seemed to resolve the issue. Uh, after test driving the car for around 94 miles, which is enough to reset the monitor systems in the um, engine computer, uh, PCM, and uh, resets all of the monitors and allows you to go through emissions, which usually takes between 80 and 120 miles, um, I was able to get it to pass emissions, uh, which is great news. So this car is good to go in the state of Connecticut um, for at least another two years. Um, I noticed immediately the car has way more power. Um, it felt like before that, you know, due to the faulty knock sensors, the ignition timing was retarded. Um, it's not a derogatory term, that's actually the technical term for ignition systems. Um, the timing is now advanced because it's picking up the correct uh, signals from those cylinder knock sensors. It's no longer in a state of protection for the engine. And I immediately noticed more power and the miles per gallon, I was able to get this car up to 26.7 miles per gallon on the highway. Um, as you can see right now, I've been driving around town in the city I live in and uh, we're at 24.5 uh, around town, which is usually 24 or 25. Um, but I did, I did have this up to 26.7, and I'm gonna take this car on a good highway run in the next uh, week or so and see just how high I can get this. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna be close to 30 miles per gallon, um, hopefully 30, uh, 29 or 30. So basically, uh, this car is good to go. It's running uh, amazingly. Uh, we passed the Connecticut state emissions, and um, I will update you guys with some more uh, bodywork videos to come. Uh, I've been working on the, on the bodywork, doing some uh, small rust repair, and I'll update you guys with some videos later in the week um, once I get to paint the car. So as always, um, thank you for watching this $400 E39 project uh, update video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.